In an advanced chemistry course, and even sometimes in an introductory chemistry course, we want to cover a little bit about thermodynamics and the idea of spontaneity. Spontaneity, free energy, the relationship between enthalpy and entropy is really one of the fundamental governing forces in our universe. This demonstration is a really easy way for students to visualize some of the processes happening, and then they can extrapolate from what they observe to start to figure out something about how this equation works. To do this demonstration, the setup is quite simple. All I have are a few straws that I've cut into about one and a half centimeter segments. And it's just a regular, ordinary white straw that I cut up into small pieces. You want to put some of these in the beaker, not enough that it covers the entire surface. And then you also want to poke them down so they get filled with water. You can do it without trying to fill it with the water. I find it works a lot better when they're actually completely filled. And the straws are typically, every straw I've used so far has always been a low enough density that even when filled with water, it still floats. So once you have them all completely filled with water, if you gently swirl the beaker, you can start to see something interesting happening. So I make sure that they're all tilted on their sides before I start the demonstration. And this part I've usually done before I, the kids come into class. I just wanted to show you how to set it up. So they're all lying on their sides. And if you start to swirl gently, not vigorously, if you do a vigorous stirring, we'll get to that a little bit later on in the demonstration. But if you go through a gentle swirling motion and then just let it sit on its own, you'll notice an interesting thing starts to happen with the particles. Rather than going in a haphazard form, you notice that you get regions where the flat sides of the straw just start to spontaneously line up with each other. And the ends of the straws also spontaneously start to line up with each other. So this is an assembly that's happening between straws spontaneously. I'm not adding additional energy to make these things assemble. They're assembling on their own accord. This is what we call spontaneous. Now, I have to explain to my students that spontaneous and instantaneous are two very different words. They tend to think that spontaneous means right now. Rusting is spontaneous. It is not fast. So I have to explain that to them. But I'm going to go to the board so we can talk a little bit about what's happening looking at the Gibbs free energy equation. So in this case, equation, we're looking at the relationship between free energy, enthalpy, and entropy changes for reactions. In this reaction, if it's spontaneous, delta G has to be negative in sign. And we have a situation where it's the arrangement of our particles is becoming more ordered, not more disordered. So I explained to my students that they can use the concept of order of disorder for talking about entropy. It's not really true, but I know that if they go on in chemistry, they're going to get more of the full story. So at an introductory level, I say disorder is OK. When I start getting to advanced chemistry, I really tell them that it's degrees of freedom. So when you have straws that are all lined up in a flat arrangement, end to end and side to side, there's not much room for different arrangements. So this is becoming less entropic. It's becoming less disordered. There are fewer degrees of freedom. So my delta S is also going to be negative. Well, knowing just a little bit of algebra, if I'm subtracting a negative term, and this is negative, then this has to be an exothermic reaction. So I then tie this into what happens with crystallization, which has the same setup. Crystallization at the right temperature, when crystals are forming out of a liquid solution at the appropriate temperature, like when ice freezes at zero degrees or below zero degrees Celsius, the energy that's involved, the enthalpy is negative. When something crystallizes, it's exothermic. It's giving away energy to its surrounding. Because it's becoming more ordered, entropy is decreasing, or less disordered, if you want to think about it that way. And it's a spontaneous thing. If you put water below zero degrees Celsius, you're spontaneously going to start seeing the formation of crystals. Now, this self-assembly process can go much further into some of the more cutting edge research. My undergraduate research involved a lot of nanotechnology and what's happening with the trying to create nanocircuits. And what they do in this case, one of the ways that they're making this happen, is they'll take a gold surface and they'll take molecules that have sulfur atoms at one tip. Well, sulfur atoms can attach themselves to gold. So if you have a sulfur atom and then a long carbon chain, that sulfur atom will make a covalent bond with the gold atom. 
But the interesting thing is that if you have a whole solution full of this stuff, these things will actually self-assemble themselves into an organized layer, or what we call a self-assembled monolayer. And they keep forming and forming and forming and forming. One of the really interesting things that can happen, though, is that if you take some kind of a very fine tip and you scrape the surface and you have a different kind of a molecule inside of your solution, that other molecule can come in and replace molecules are there and create another completely perfectly hexagonally close-packed self-assembled monolayer. So when we're talking about how we're going to get to nanocircuitry and making things smaller than a microchip, a microchip has details on the order of a micrometer. Well, if you can imagine things on the order of a couple of nanometers, that's 1,000 times smaller features. And if you can imagine your circuits running at 1,000 times the speed, that's a really powerful piece of technology. I don't always explain this to my students. I definitely don't do this in an intro-level chemistry class. But towards the end of advanced chemistry, when we have a little bit of time after my students take the AP exam, I do talk a little about this so they can see some of the cutting-edge research that's happening. But if you're going to integrate this into your classroom, this is just a really nice image that students can see of the relationship between delta G, delta H, and delta S. It's a nice visual demonstration because usually students can't see crystallization happening on the atomic level. But when you blow it up to an analogy that they can see on the visual level, it really makes a powerful thing for them to see and remember the spontaneous arrangement of something happening. Now, I wouldn't use this with a general chemistry course. This is a little beyond anything that I would cover with them. But in terms of my advanced chemistry course, usually after the AP exam, I'll give them some of this as an example so they can see some of the cutting edge technology, things that they might more likely see at a major research university, and really how chemistry is coming into technology and really materials are manipulating the way that we function on a daily basis. Now, I mentioned that I was going to show you what happens at higher temperature or higher agitation. So I'm going to go back to the beaker now. If you're going to go for a higher temperature situation, what happens? The analogy here is that my stirring is what's analogous to temperature. So if I stir at a rapid rate, I already have a crystalline arrangement inside of my beaker. So if you have a crystal and you increase the temperature on it, eventually you're going to get to the point that you can break down the crystal lattice, those bonds between particles or between molecules that hold the crystal together. So if we go to the overhead, I'll show you what happens when I agitate quickly. If you get a large agitation, these particles don't have the chance to assemble. If you have too much temperature going on or too much thermal energy and too much kinetic energy of the particles, there's no way they can self-assemble. As soon as some of the assembly happens, they get broken apart by the ambient energy of the system. But if we slow things down and we lower the temperature at which this is happening, like lowering the temperature of ice, then we start to see that self-assembly of crystallization happen. So it's a nice analogy to show crystallization on a macroscopic level, but also to talk about the relationship between Gibbs free energy, enthalpy, and entropy. Thank you.